I am Josh Felber. Welcome to Making Bank, where we uncover the success strategies, the secrets of the top 1% so we can help you excel your life and start your path to success today. We're going to talk a little bit about leadership and how do you lead a team? What, what are the fundamentals that it takes to lead a team? For myself, I've, since I've owned multiple businesses over the years, uh, one company I had, we had over 500 people working for us in 10 different uh, offices. And you, it was such a learning process to learn how to build a team. And it's really important as you're building that team to make sure you have the right core people around you. But one of the things that makes all team successful, whether you're a Navy SEAL team, whether you're in the Special Forces, whether you're in corporate America, or just running your own business out there like you are, is uh, three things. So one is you gotta have self-awareness, just, just about how other people look at you, how other people think about you, and what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. Uh, number two, you have to be able to have open communication, open communication with your team, open communication with uh, your, your family, whoever that may be, you gotta be able to have the safety to be able to communicate with each other without some kind of punishment gonna happen if you uh, bring up something that the other person may not like. And so open communication is gonna be very important as well as you build your team and to create a strong leadership position. Uh, take your leadership position and make it even stronger. And then the third thing is trust. Trust is a major factor when building your team. I, I mean, just think about, you know, if you are, you know, a, a special forces or Navy SEAL team or whatever that may be, you got to know every single person on your team you can trust. They have your back. They're keeping your life safe in your hands. Just as well as you're running your business, you got to be able to trust all the people around you that they're going to be able to step up get their job done, as well as bring problems and solutions to you uh, and, and how to resolve those. So uh, one of the biggest things though, I wanna start off by talking about a little bit is self-awareness and why that is so important. Today, we are so busy, there's so many distractions that we tend to lose focus on that. And the majority of the people in the population have no idea, have no self-awareness about who they are, how other people perceive them, as well as what their strengths and weaknesses are, what, what are those uh, core values uh, and, and what those strengths are that have been instilled in you since birth. And we really have to take a step back and understand who we are before we can go out and lead other people. So a great exercise is sit down with a piece of paper, list off 15 different strengths or weaknesses that, or things that say strengths and things that you don't like to do, uh, or maybe just really bother you. So maybe you're the person that hates people pointing fingers or just cannot stand being late, um, or you know you just don't like the person that tells that white lie. And so those are really important subjects for you. But make a list of those 15 strengths that God gave you since you were a little kid. And then what are those top five, those top five things that you just really cannot have you know, happen within your business? And by doing that, that's going to help you start to create your core heartbeat of your business, of your company. Because as being the owner, the leader, you are the heartbeat of your business. And so this is going to help us start to create some self-awareness about who we are, what we can put up with, what we can't put up with, as well as going to allow us, as we hire our team, to give those people that are just like us the benefit of the doubt. Because that's who we give the most of the benefit of the doubt to, is ourselves. Okay, number two, open communication. So many times in business, we just there's different silos within our business, and that lack of communication, let alone open communication, is what's going to really create a major bottleneck for our company. 
And so we have to figure out ways that we can create clear and concise open communication as well as the freedom for our team to be able to communicate with each other and or yourself as a leader, as the owner of the business. And by allowing them to have that freedom, that openness to, to communicate without any kind of punishment, without any kind of retribution or anything like that, then they're more willing to bring the items of priority, more the items that re the, those really deep down items that need to happen and need to be discussed through open communication to help drive your business forward and to help move your business to that next level. So open communication is a major factor. And then number three is trust. We gotta be able to trust our team, know that our team is out there. They have our backs, we have their back, and everybody's moving in the same direction. They're moving the business, they're moving their area that they're focused on in the direction of the mission, of the culture of the company. And knowing, hey, if I'm not here for a week or I have to go out of town and, um, or people, my family's sick, I, I trust and know that they can run the business, that they can move it to that next level. And I'm not going to have to worry about coming back and finding just things falling apart everywhere. And so trust is a very important factor in leadership and growing your team as well. So uh, I'm really excited. Up next, we have a excellent guest on our show today. He is a Navy SEAL, corporate trainer, consultant, and a, uh, a leader on leadership and creating the optimal team for your business, for your company. And so I'm excited to uh, bring Jeff Boss on the show next, and I hope you stick around, and we'll be right back. I am Josh Felber, and you're watching Making Bank. Hi, I'm cooking up a fresh batch of my Sun Up Before Sun Protector. Last year, my family headed off to the sunny beaches of Riviera Maya for a much needed vacation. But I knew I wouldn't enjoy myself if we were smothering our skin with ingredients that cause reproductive disorders, hormonal imbalances, even cancer. Kind of takes that ah feeling out of a beautiful day, right? Now you can make every beautiful day delicious to your skin by using Sun Up Before Sun Protector by Primal Life Organics. I am Josh Felber. You're watching Making Bank. And we're coming back today with an awesome entrepreneur. His name is Jeff Boss. He's an executive coach focused on communication and decision making, as well as a former Navy SEAL. And I'm really excited to have him on Making Bank today. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, right, thank you, Josh. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited as well. For sure, man. I, you know, I've, I'm really intrigued with your background. We, uh, it's really cool because we align on a lot of different things with high performance, peak performance, uh, coaching, and everything. And I'd really like to dive into exactly what you're doing today, and you know, and then how your past and how your background from where you came from, you know, relates to what you know your successes and helping other people have successes. Um, okay. So if you want to start off, maybe kind of give, give us a quick overview on what you're specifically focused on today. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm focused on, on individuals and teams specifically. So, so leaders, uh, anywhere from high potentials up through executives, and then the, the team leaders who run, say, for example, a, a team, a meeting, uh, a subset of a business, okay. uh, the, 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 team, the team as a whole. So uh, focus on communication and decision making of both. Awesome. And so then you go into a specific company, kind of take a look at how their team is operating, how they're connecting and interacting with each other through, you know, obviously with communication and, and how that whole decision making tree and then help them become more effective in that. Is that kind of a good overview? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. It, it well, typically starts with the individual. And then from there, if, uh, you know, if they are running a team, then, uh, then, you know, we, it'll proliferate from there. But for the most part, it'll start off individual and then gradually move to a team because you really can't lead a team until you lead yourself, you know, so. Definitely. That's the case for sure. Well, so tell us a little bit about your background. I know we mentioned Navy SEAL and it looks, I mean, you have tons of different accolades with your schooling. And I think you saw something where you're in Harvard business right now. I, I disenrolled. Oh, I disenrolled from it. Yeah. Okay. To, to be, I mean, just to be completely transparent, I didn't like the content. I didn't like, uh, I didn't like the learning environment. So sure. I disenrolled. 
Uh, you know, and that's I find a lot of that with you know people I've interviewed a lot is just with the whole school process and, and a lot of the content, like you said, is becoming either dated or it, you know it's just not where it needs to be with the way things are moving so fast these days. It was completely dated. I mean, they were, <laughs> they were doing things that we did you know three years ago, and they're citing that as as the forefront. And I'm I don't mean to belittle. Harvard, because it is a name, but to me sure. it was it was just that it's it's a name, you know. And the content, I was pretty disappointed. <laughs> well, <Sorry. laughs> okay, man. Well, then we'll just jump over Harvard. <laughs> so no, okay. I guess let's dive a little bit into your background. Um, you know, as a Navy SEAL, you know what I know. I guess what? Why did you want to head down that path? I knew uh, I knew what I didn't want to do, and I, I knew I knew that I didn't want to go to work in a, work in a cubicle, wear a suit and tie, and do the same thing every day. I wanted to do, and there's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't for me at the time. Now it is. <laughs> now I'm good with it. So so now, uh, or actually back then, I just wanted to uh, to be quite honest. I wanted to jump out of planes, blow things up, and uh, you know, carry a gun and do fun things, which I thought were fun at the time. So so uh, so that's what I did. So. I went to, went to Ohio State. I enlisted after that. Um, I didn't want to be, be an officer because I wanted to stay operational. Okay. Uh, I wanted to kick in doors and do the, do the fun thing. And, uh, you know, so, that, so that's what I did, and I don't have any, any regrets. Stayed in for 13 years. Got out in wow. uh, June of 2013. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And, you know, funny, it's just, when I, was, I was kind of the same way when I was a little kid growing up. Was, that's what I wanted to do. But then I got into the whole business and owned – 15 different companies over the years. And, and then when I was 29, I had sold a company and, or no, uh, I was 28. I was like, man, I really want to go do that. So I enrolled, I depped in and through their delayed entry program, started training, started training. And actually my friend that I mentioned earlier when we were off camera, uh, we both were training together. I ended up blowing out my knee water skiing. And oh, no. yeah, I, I mean, I was in the whole program and, um, and, I went and got ACL surgery, went back, and I got all my waivers because I was 29 now at that point. Got all the way, but they would not give me one for my ACL. I mean, I went through like five different doctors, threw down in Tennessee, all over, and just could not get it. And my friend obviously went in, and he, you know, is stationed and everything. But oh, I was wow. so I was so bummed. But you know, it, it made good turns in my life and, and everything too. So I'm glad you got the experience and have that part of it. Well, if you want, I'm happy to come up and, and give you the experience. You can just stay up for five and a half days. I'll spray a hose with cold water on you. <laughs> <laughs> what Mark Devine's doing out in <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it'd be fine. It'd be, it'd be a good experience. Um, and so I guess, you know, while you're in the, you know, in the Navy SEALs, you know, how did that, you know, what you've learned through that whole process, you know, as working in a team, because that's what you guys have to operate in is a team situation. How did that give you the strategies and the mindsets because I saw you had a great ebook on the mindset and everything to you know now go out and start teaching you know in the whole business realm and in entrepreneurs and peak performance yeah great question so when I got out of the Navy I worked for the McChrystal group in uh, management consulting okay and I worked there for for about a year and a half and, and got a, a pretty pretty good lay of the land as far as um, uh, diversity across business sectors go sure worked in uh, agriculture, finance, tech, uh, oil, oil and gas. And so the, the same problems and the same challenges arose from industry to industry. And it all came down to communication and, and decision making. And so what the, the three things that we had to do on the battlefield as SEALs were shoot, move, and communicate. Okay. You know, and, and what I found in, in working in business is that this, it's the same exact uh, recipe for success. Not literally, you know, <laughs> but... When you say, for example, when you shoot, you know, when you shoot a gun, I don't, I don't know if you've shot a gun, oh, but yeah. there's a, yeah. there's, uh, <laughs> there's a number of right on a number of performance criteria that you have to hit. You know, there's there's uh, you, there's goal setting, there's there's focus, there's uh, impulse control, there's habits, um, there's uh, you know, if you want to get into, into the spiritual realm, there are personal values right. uh, depending on what you're shooting at. So there are a lot of criteria, all of four pillars of of what I call call uh, performance that, that really okay. uh, comprise one's being. That's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And so, so I found that, that the same thing, no matter what, what industry you're in, people are the same. They're, right. they're, they're, exact, they're all the same. You know, different but the same. And so what I would see executives come out of meetings red in the face, you know, full of emotion, just ready to burst. But on the battlefield, I could be telling a joke next to a guy, you know, with, with 
you know, in a gunfight. Sure. So the question is why, you know, and, and it comes back to those, those performance criteria, impulse control, uh, self-confidence, how you manage yourself. Um, so those, those play into individual leadership, which ultimately scale into, into leading a team. But, um, the, it's how you get to to the end state sure. of, of success. You know, it's it's all the same. End state may be different, battlefield versus boardroom, but how you get there, same principles apply. Awesome. Hey Jeff, we gotta take a quick break. Can you stick around? I'll be here. Awesome. You're watching Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I am Josh Felber, and you're watching Making Bank. And we've had the honor and the privilege so far to speak with Jeff Boss, and he's been filling us in on how to communicate and how he communicated on the battlefield and how that translates over to executive decision-making, uh, you know, being able to work with your team and be able to communicate whether he was telling a joke on the battlefield as being able, how that translates over into your business and to be able to have a or be able to tell a joke and be able to just communicate with your team in just a cool hearted manner so you, it makes you more successful. So, Jeff, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Josh. Uh, so, when we kind of left off, you were jumping into a couple different strategies on what you utilized when you were in the battlefield. So, you're able to maintain composure, stay calm and focused as well as communication is critical when you're on the battlefield. And if you're not able to communicate with your teammates, that's going to help. I mean, that's actually going to jeopardize your guys' situation out there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, communication is everything, whether it's in a team, in a, in a, in a marriage, for example, or, or in business. Sure. And uh, I, I will say I'm divorced, by the way. So <laughs> that's a whole other story. But it, you know, it just goes. It just highlights the the the, uh, the importance of it, right? Communication is everything, um, and that's that goes for nonverbal as well. So uh, for for an entrepreneur out there, um, my first my first recommendation is is to uh, you clearly have a vision for for how you define your company and what success looks like. And my recommendation is to share it with everybody. Have okay. everybody on the same page as far as what your expectations are, what your criteria for success are, uh, so that they can go out and act with it with equal autonomy. Definitely, and I know uh, actually, I was, uh, was talking to a good friend of mine the other day, and he, you know, he was saying you want to find that heartbeat. You want to find that heartbeat of the same other people on your team, and then that way, that communication that you have is going to allow you to really sync up. And that, that's that person that you know, hey, I would give whatever. You know, if, they, if they have something that comes up and they got to take off, I'm there for them. Just like you guys are there for you on, each other on the battlefield or you know, when you're on a mission. You know 110% that, hey, all these six other guys or, you know, on my team have my back. Yep. I don't even have to think because we're all thinking in the same thing. And, you know, you just touched on a really important point when you mentioned the heartbeat, and that's consistency. Sure. Because yep. heartbeats are ideally consistent, right? Right. And so and when you when you apply that to the company, the, the organization, and you look at their uh, their cadence of, say, meeting schedules, they're anything but consistent. And it, and it, it erodes trust. Right. You know? it, it does because if I'm working on, say, Project A, and I've, I've been – you know, working away all morning, and then someone says, "Oh, we're having we're having a meeting right now." You know, you got I got to drop what I'm doing, and you know, divert my focus and attention away to this meeting that you know someone didn't properly plan for, and that erodes trust. Sure. So, with with building out that 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 cadence, that that heartbeat, um, you know, another 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 action step is to is to have the same meeting every week and, and label that meeting as as a meeting to make a decision to inform uh to take action um to to share information um have the same meeting same participants and the same decision makers every week okay and so by then setting a a standard every week then that's going to allow all of our employees our team you know everybody that's part of our company 
be able to stay in sync is what you're saying. And it's right. okay. And then and that's, that's going to allow us to then, you know, we know every time we have this meeting, this is what, this is the outcome that we're looking for from that. Exactly. That's the heartbeat. That's the, so you awesome. mentioned the individual heartbeat. That's the organizational heartbeat. Right. And then, you know, as leaders, as executives of the company, then our, you know, what kind of make, makes that up then would be, you know, our core beliefs and our values and, and our character that everybody else is, you know, synced up with as well. And then that's going to help us produce the best outcome overall. Yep. Yep. I, I can't stress, you know, core values, uh, character enough. Fit is everything. <laughs> You have one orange amongst the whole group of apples, and it's just it's just odd, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's um, I know I was working with a, cl- a client the other day, and you know he, had, he was in that same position, and he he you know the whole team was flowing, and there was just the guy had the you know the guy had great qualifications, you know he he worked hard, but there was just something that was missing out of it, and they finally in you know had to sit down and. When they went through everything and, the, and the, that character and those beliefs and all that, they realized that his heartbeat, he wasn't beating that same beat as everybody else. Oh, and yeah. so they had to let him go. You know, and, but when, he did, when they did, you know, he was like, hey, I want to thank you because you know what? You just helped me realize I don't want to be in the same position for the next five years or ten years and not end up, you know, not end up in the best position for myself and my family. And so you know, I think it's you know, very imperative as we're you – know, business owners today to make sure that we do have the best communication, you know, with our team uh, moving forward, as well as that's going to help then open up our companies to the best opportunity for success overall. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and doing so in person versus, versus a virtual team, you know, like you said, as, as business grows and becomes even more turbulent, it's going to be even more challenging. For but sure. But consistency is everything. It's key. Definitely. So tell me a time, whether it was in the Navy SEALs, whether it was, uh, you know, in your business, you know, creating your business and everything, you know, was there ever a time when you just felt like, man, I just, I just want to give up and maybe it was hell week. <laughs> you know, or... No, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't say that there was ever a time that, that I wanted to, to, to just throw up the white flag and say, all sure. right, I'm out here. But I, I will say that in my, in my first Hell Week, so I, I was rolled back midway through Hell Week for a, a stress fracture in my femur. Right. I was rolled back to day one, had to go went through again, graduated with, with uh, uh, 236, my, my graduating class. Awesome. But in, I started with 234, and uh, um, you, I won't even go there. I was missing the, the uh, Discovery video. Oh. <laughs> See my bald head on it. But but anyway, um, I was rolled back midway, midway through Hell Week, and I remember uh, – I mean, aside from being just, just, uh, you know, completely let down because that was my goal and my dream and in sure. vision, you know, totally depressed. And, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, alternative was to either go out, you know, and be on a ship or, uh, or stay with, stick with where I was. So it was my, I believe my, my purpose, my values and, and everything that I ever wanted to do at that point in my life was, was be a seal. So, um, you know, just stuck it out and stay with it. And, you know, that mindset you created for yourself, like, hey, you know, all my, your whole core, your inner beliefs, your inner being, I mean, you were so congruent in what your outcome was that, you know, that gave you that focused mindset to push through and continue to push through that. How do you take that and then translate that to help, you know, a business owner who's struggling or help, you know, an executive having problems with his team? Yeah, uh, great, great question. A couple ways. So, so you want to align values with their behavior and their behavior with the values of the, of the company, All right? So they okay. they all have to almost form three concentric circles with with fit being right right in the middle. Maybe maybe two concentric circles. I don't know. I was a Spanish major, not math. <laughs> <laughs> but so so but you want ideally because at the center of of that bullseye, you know, of of those three is 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 the target, and that's where fulfillment is, right? Right. So. Personally, personally, I've never, I've never done, I've never worked anywhere that hasn't been fulfilling or, or somewhere that, that I haven't enjoyed. Okay. Um, and if uh, the second that I stopped enjoying it, I left. And I think, sure. me, you know, aligning those, those three uh, personal values with personal behavior and then personal behavior with, with organizational values, 
um, that's going to, that's, that sustains success. You know, that sustains, that keeps the fire going and it, uh, it, it avoids complacency, avoids chaos. You know, when you, when you, uh, when you have those three aligned, it, it's everything. So, um, how, how do I do it? Um, you start, start with the individual and ask, you know, you want to identify what's important to him or her and why. Sure. Um, a lot of times I think people will name off things that should be important to them for fear of social, you know, social judgment, but oftentimes they're not when they really reflect and, uh, and, and dig deep. And so they, they're like, well, that's a good question. Why is that important to me? I don't know. <laughs> why, why do I feel the need to speak up every single meeting? I don't know. Um, so, so you kind of scale that back and, 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 uh, match it with their behavior and how, and then look at how their behavior aligns with the strategies of the organization to achieve their, their objectives. Okay. And then, you know, I guess, how do you, you know, like you said, they, you know, they kind of give you those surface answers and like, oh, you know, cause they don't want to open up and kind of be that vulnerable person to really, you know, dig in deep and understand how do you kind of get them to start to break through into that? Yeah, I think I think that's the art of being a coach. You know, you 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 know know just as well as I do that when there's emotion, you go right to it because that's where behavior change you know resides. So uh, when you when there's when there's hesitancy or a sigh or you know something that causes them to really reflect, you can tell. You can right. just you can read body language pretty well. So uh, that's the kind of kind of the, the art and science of, of being the coach is knowing when to, to ask a little more, you know, not push that person over the edge, but get them right to the tipping point where they want to, you know, reflect on, on why they shouldn't jump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so <clears throat> what um, what was your biggest success so far in your career or, or your lifespan? And I, it was definitely being in the SEALs and being at the command I was at. It was, it was the uh, you know the top uh, top SEAL team out there. So, and what was one of your biggest takeaways then from being in the SEAL team that has helped you through life? You know, I know you kind of mentioned the communication and things like that, and being, but you know, really deep down, what was that kind of that core piece that you took away that's just really transformed your life overall? I would say, great question. I would say, um, I would say humility, because okay. there's 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 entirely too much ego in this world. Let alone, you know, one from one business to another, and, and ego is, it's just the, you know, it incites turf wars. It, it clouds people's thinking, which which uh, impedes their judgment and, right. and performance. Um, I, I can't stand arrogance. Can't stand. <laughs> and uh, the guys I was working with, if if they're not arrogant, then there's no reason for anybody else to be. Sure. If I, you know, I don't hold what what I did and where I came from. It's it's just a different job. Some people put it on a pedestal. Others see it as, as equal. I, I just see or even less. Who knows? But I I just see it as just another job. And it's, uh, that's where I came from. You know, people come from construction, uh, whatever. So definitely. And and then the, you know when you kind of, I guess when you encounter that in the businesses that you're working with. So you, I mean, like you said, there there are a lot of people, and I run into them. And, I mean, they have that ego, and it, it, it does block, you know, it clouds that vision. It clouds, you know, their, their ability to even lead successfully. You know, how do you kind of help them break through that? Because that's usually something that I found that kind of ends up, it's been there for most of their life. Yeah, 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 it has. It has. I think with, with people like that, you know, that some, people, some people need a kick in the butt. Some people need a pat on the back. And so, sure. and so with overly um, loud personalities and, and egos, uh, they need they need a, a kind of a wake up call. So so uh, a lot of the times I find that people are, um, you know, they're they're self centered because they're masking something. They're they're hiding behind something. Right. So they're they're so they're projecting some other sort of strength that they want people to see. So uh, as as a coach, if 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 we're contracted, um, then you know that's that's when you start asking some some more difficult questions. Really and difficult questions. Definitely and. Can you give us three kind of one or two or three action steps, you know, something, whether it's, you know, our, uh, the entrepreneurs, the, you know, our audience here can go out and start applying today. It could be, Hey, you know, I want to start to be able to communicate with my employees better, or I want to, how do I figure out what my, um, core values are? You know, just maybe something we can give them to go ahead and take away and they can start applying today. Sure. Yeah. Great question. Um, so three things I would say values, self-awareness and self-talk, uh, self 
I'll hit on self-talk last because it's the most important. I don't want anybody closing out of their screens. So, so values, values. Look at, I would say, look at the, look at the, look at your hobbies, look at your interests, uh, the books you read, the people you hang out with, the places you go, the the activities that you do on a daily basis, and look look at the trends that are shared amongst all of them. You know, what are the values implicit to all of those that are that are important to you, and why? And you'll find that there is a trend, whether it's it's learning, self improvement, fitness. Um, you know, music, uh, there, there's some sort of trend and, and the key is to, is to be, is to ask, um, what's important to you? What does the world need? Uh, what will the world pay me for? You know, and, and how can I serve, how can I serve others? You know, sure, and, sure. and the, and the, the center of all those, all those circles is, is your purpose. So moving on to self-awareness, I don't think anybody would, uh, would be set back with, uh, Maybe maybe a better way to say it is I think everybody could could uh, could benefit from more self awareness, including myself. I'm so <laughs> yeah, not, I mean self awareness. Uh, you know, pay, so so let's see. A takeaway is to um, look at look at how people re- respond to you. Look at how people react. Um, are they looking away from you when you when you speak? Um, are they are they paying attention? Are their eyes furrowed? Um, are they are they um, coming? To you, are they waiting for you to come to them? Um, you know, and still ask ask why. You know, what's sure. what's what's the driving motivator behavior behind all of these? And then look at the self talk behind behind that awareness. So what self talk is the is the voice inside your head amongst all the other voices inside your head, my head at least. <laughs> that's uh, that's this thing it's saying I can't do this or I'm not good enough or. You know, maybe they'll choose somebody else or why me. Um, that's the negative side. The flip side is I can do this. I got this. I'm going to nail this. So look at what sort of self-talk is, is, is going in your head when, when, uh, when challenges are uh, crossing your path. And being aware of that self-talk and, and reversing that self-talk, you know, that self-talk is everything. Because you, you, you tell your mind, you can tell your mind anything. The mind doesn't know anything other than what you tell it. And you can choose your thoughts. So you choose what you want to tell your mind and your body will follow. Definitely. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, you know, for me, I know, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm a very optimistic. I'm driven. I'm focused. And, you know, I, you, know you still have those times you're like, oh, man, you just kind of you have, you have that little bit of self-doubt or something kind of slips in. But the difference is, is cutting it short. And you're like, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, it was 30 seconds. Ah, okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you know it's not going to get you anywhere to stay in that same spot mentally. And so, I mean, I think those are three, you know, three key points uh, to start to, you know, become more effective in who you are and moving yourself forward, um, you know, towards success and everything. So, awesome, man. Well, we got to wrap up here in a minute. Give us one technology or one thing that you can't live without. Ooh, good question. I'd have to say the iPhone. iPhone. I've been to a bank in probably ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Most business, a lot of people run their business off of it these days. Yeah. So yeah. that's for sure, man. And Jeff, tell tell our audience where can they get some more information on you? Um, I know you have a book out. You have an ebook too, as well. You know, let us know where we can find you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. So my website is adaptabilitycoach.com. On there, you can find links to to my book, which actually just came out on hardcover today. Awesome! It's called uh, yeah, thank you. Called Navigating Chaos: How to Find Certainty in Uncertain Situations. Uh, talks a lot about the things that we discussed in uh, in this interview, and then I have a, a an, an ebook as well called Managing the Mental Game, and that talks about how to uh, build mental fortitude. Um, so, uh, includes a whole lot of, of different exercises for doing so. Uh, it's five bucks. You can get that on my on my website as well. So adaptabilitycoach.com. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate you coming on today. It was an honor to have you on the show. Likewise. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Have a For good time. Sure. You're watching Making Bank, and we were here with Jeff Boss today. I want you to get out and be extraordinary. Making Bank is also available for download on iTunes and Stitcher.